back when you were 14 years old in eighth grade, what was your thought of this series? And then where, where do you stand with Larry Bird? Well, first of all, you know, as I go back to my childhood, you know, the Indiana Hoosiers were kind of the, the talk of, you know, the 80s because they won the title in 81 and 87. Um, Pacers had some moments in those times and, and certainly some, some good players. Um, the guy that I remember, the earliest one for me that I remember well is Clark Kellogg and, and, and that group. Um, but, uh, but this was the first time that I remember as a Pacers fan, because I wasn't around for the ABA great days of Slick Leonard and Roger Brown, and McGinnis and those guys. This was the first time that I remember like being excited about the playoffs. And, mm -hmm. um, I remember it well because, you know, Chuck Person had just went nuts and, you know, Reggie was starting to round into this you know, special, special player, which he became. And, um, and we had a bunch of, you know, fun guys to watch play. And, and then you're watching kind of the, the old guard, um, you know, in Boston that's changed a little bit from the early, you know, from my days of watching them in the, in the mid eighties when they were great, great um, to getting a little bit older, but still happened something magical about them. And certainly the, the magic of the Boston Garden. So um, the, the thing that I remember most, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, is, uh, is Larry Bird goes down, and I remember thinking, we got a shot. Mm -hmm. And then Larry Bird came back, and I said, we're dead. And I remember that, I remember that <laughs> vividly. I was 14 years old. I don't know. I, somehow I had, getting, I had a life lesson on momentum from all the hoops I had watched up to that point. But I remember thinking, nope, not our, not our year. Yeah. It, when you think of Larry Bird, obviously you're rooting for the Pacers, but are you rooting for Larry? Are you, I mean, what's the relationship like, you know, knowing that he's a Boston Celtic, but he grew up in yeah. Indiana? Well, I think everybody had paid attention and were fans from afar forever, right? And so, um, you know, we all grew up from a national telecast standpoint. You all grow up from watching in the 80s you know, Boston in the early game, LA in the late game, or whatever the case may be. Like, those are the two teams you saw all the time. You, you didn't see many other teams. I was fortunate enough that my dad um, was a doctor, and he would – his group covered the Pacers. And so he would cover maybe four games a year as a backup. And so I'd get to go to games and watch different teams play and different guys play. But I didn't really – I wasn't into the NBA like I was into college at the time. but you know, if you're from Indiana, the Larry Bird story was, you know, really well told. And um, obviously, you know, he was one of the favorites. I'm sure if you did a jersey sales ranking in 1991, um, you know, Larry Bird's in Indiana would be hard to beat. Well, Larry Bird goes down. And as Brad Stevens said earlier, man, we have a chance. Let me ask you this. With Bird going down, obviously the Celtics are getting older. Are you thinking, man, I don't know if Larry's going to come back. This could be the last time we ever see Larry Bird play. Was that at all coming into your mind? I don't remember thinking that. Um, but obviously it wasn't too far, right? Um, mm -hmm. You had the dream team the next summer, and um, you know, but not too much after that, if after that, right? Uh, but I think, but I think um, the thing that, that really stood out to me about this game as you're watching early on is, first of all, the first play of the game, they run a little isolation at the top of the key for Larry. It just comes off a little like zipper screen and then pops out and catches it. And, you know, he, he has a chance to take that jump shot, but he's setting a tone for the game, bad back or not, by driving it to the rim. Um, the first six minutes of that were incredibly intense, I thought. Uh, and then the other thing that really stood out was I had forgotten Mikhail came off the bench. You know, Mikhail comes in for him. And so as the opposing coach, right, you're sitting there and you're like, Bob Hill's like, oh, shoot, Larry Bird's going to the bench. And then you're like, really? Another top 50 guys replacing him? That makes me feel a lot better. Um, it was interesting because um, the Pacers started big with Thompson and Dryling. Um, and, uh, and that kind of was counter to the way that the, that the Celtics were starting with Lewis Gamble Bird. Um, and then it flipped later on in the game as you're watching them and the Pacers go small. 
Well, Coach, you called it. Larry Bird returns and all the momentum. And by the way, the crowd, when he did come back, I get to sense watching it. I, like, I don't know what it was like live, but I get to sense it. They kind of thought, man, this thing could be over, this whole Larry Bird era. He had his back injuries. And now, all of a sudden, they get a chance to see him play one more time. And, man, did they steal the momentum away. What really stood out to you as far as the play of the Celtics when Bird returned? Well, I don't remember if it was, and I watched it yesterday, but I don't remember if it was right when he returned or right before he returned. But I thought as it was going back and forth there, um, I thought the McHale Parrish baskets on the post were huge because it was teetering a little bit. But when Bird came back in, just the, just the whole energy in the building changed, the whole energy of its team changed. He was – clearly on a mission, you know, who knows what everybody was thinking in the building, but he was Larry Bird, you know, Boston Celtics playoff, you know, you know, best. He, he just looked tremendous attacking, making the right play in, in the third and the fourth. He had a couple of plays that were just special. I mean, they continue to show him today. Um, and when you have all these clips to choose from, you know, that's hard to believe that they'd pick a game when he was a little bit older in 91. You think that there are players like that now or just because the game is so different, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to compare the eras? I think there are players, surely there are players like that. Um, but, I, but I do think, like, he's – it's unique. Um, it's special. Um, we always say specials, specials, special for a reason. Like, it's not for everyone. And, uh, and he's clearly, you know, upper echelon of that, of that grit, of that toughness, of that desire. But they had a number of those guys like that um, through that era and, you know, really throughout the history and the tradition of the Celtics. But um, what he was able to do and look fresh coming back in the game after being back in the locker room for 30 minutes or whatever the case may be, I think on his first catch, he let one fly from three, like – um, he just looks like he could just pick up and, and keep going. Uh, pretty remarkable, um, you know, when you rewatch it. 